Hello everyone, my name is DJ Foby, and this is another episode of my Dwarf Fortress tutorial. Um, in this episode, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, the first thing is going to be down below in my uh, little uh, industrial area. I'm going to show you something that just happened not too long ago. Uh, you will see this right here. This has, was not here before. This is a wall that is currently being built. And if you look right here inside of this wall, there's a guy blinking with a exclamation point. Now, the reason for that is, is because he has gotten into a fey mood or got possessed. Uh, one or the other. Let me see real quick. Yeah, he's in a strange mood. And what that means, uh, you'll see this happen from time to time in your own games. But what that means is he wants to create an artifact. And uh, sometimes when that happens, they, they will take over a shop and then they will head out and look for materials they need to make this artifact that they're wanting to create. Well, what happens if he doesn't find the, the materials he needs or can, you don't have the uh, correct workshop that he needs, he will go crazy. And once in a while... Uh, it'll happen he'll go crazy and start killing other dwarves sometimes you'll get lucky and he'll just go into like a like a depression and he will end up like starving or uh, dehydrating himself to death and uh, well that's not gonna happen here because right now I don't have the materials that he needs to create this artifact so what I'm doing is I'm walling him off just in case he goes crazy and wants to start killing other dwarves. And so I need to be prepared for that. It's it's a bad thing, honestly, but it'll happen from time to time and there's nothing really that you can do about it at all. And so you just need to take care of him and block him off. Um, I'm going to lock him up in, in that... Uh, workshop and he, there he will remain until he dies and then I'll break down the wall and that'll be that. Uh, it's kind of depressing having to do it that way but it's got to be done otherwise I he poses a big threat to the security of my entire fortress so uh, better him than everybody. So anyway I'm gonna go ahead and unpause it and let him get the, let them get to work on that wall again. A couple more things I wanted to show you is I got everything pretty much um, organized. I've already placing, started placing beds and things in here. Um, I haven't got all the doors and beds that I still need to put in there, but that is coming slowly but surely. And let me see if make sure my uh, carpenter. Oh, I need to make some beds. Put that on repeat. We'll go down to my, actually, I need my mason's workshop. Okay, there, that's good. He's making doors, tables, and thrones, which is a good thing because I need them. Also, I see here I got some barrels so I could possibly start making some uh, alcohol. Let's make sure we do that here. Brew drink, put it on repeat. Right, uh, I'm pretty sure I explained this wall to you guys. I'm getting everything a little more organized and uh, getting things set up for the future. Now, uh, this right now is going to be more of a let's play than a tutorial because I need to get a little bit further in my game than, uh, than I currently am to be able to show you more new things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause it right now until something else happens. Hopefully it's something new that I can show you. So I will be back, guys. Okay, I uh, just now got the um, message that an elven caravan has arrived. And that's a trading caravan, so I'll be able to trade a few things if I have anything to trade. Uh, right now I may just not have anything that I can trade off. So it might not even be worth my time to trade with them, but just to show you how, since I missed it the last time, I will go ahead and do it anyway. Maybe trade some alcohol or something with them, but let me go ahead and pause until they get everything over here, and then I'll show you how to trade, guys. Here. 
Okay, the Elven Caravan has arrived and they are setting up. I will go ahead and show you what you can do with trade caravans. So I'm going to hit Q, same as any other building or workshop or whatever. And if you highlight the trade depot, you'll get these options. The first one is move goods to and from the depot. Uh, the second option, T for trade, will not be available until you have a broker or somebody designated as a broker in your trade depot. Um, it, when R, no trader requested or needed at depot. If you hit R, it will say trader requested at depot, meaning your uh, broker is basically uh, told over loudspeakers, I guess, to come to the trade depot because somebody needs to come and trade. Right now, we don't need that. And if you hit B, anyone may trade, that means anybody in your fortress uh, can go up to the trade depot and trade. If I hit B, only broker may trade. Uh, that that regulates only my broker, only the person that I designate as my broker can is can trade anything at all. And that way, you know, if you have a broker with the right skills and you send them in there, they will get you better deals, things like that. You'll be able to see the prices of objects and whatnot. So it's always a good idea to use your broker. If you don't have a broker, then uh, it's okay to go ahead and say anyone may trade. But it's always a good idea to have a broker. So let's go ahead and see who my broker is. I'm going to hit N for Noble. And look here, we got a vacant spot for my, I don't need a bookkeeper right now, but we'll leave that there for now. Uh, let's go ahead and fill our broker up. He's a proficient liar, negotiator, appraiser, right there, competent appraiser. So let's hit enter. He is now our broker. So I'm going to hit escape. And now that we have a broker, I'm going to hit Q, highlight my trading depot. And I'm going to hit G for move goods to and from depot. Let me go ahead and hit G. You'll get this list of everything you have in your fortress pretty much. And you can go through here and select things that you want to trade. And right now there's a lot of stone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter that out. Probably find something that we can trade. We don't want to trade logs to elves. They will definitely get mad about that. So we won't want to find something else. Um, seed barrels, ropes, crutches, uh, I guess we could go for seed barrels just to sell something. See how many drinks do we have? We have quite a bit. Hmm. Uh, one thing you want to keep in mind, an elven caravan, you want to make sure not to trade them any wood. If you trade them wood, it'll anger them, and then they'll start putting restrictions on you on how much uh, wood you can, actually how many trees you could chop down during an entire year. They'll tell you, like, limit it to 100 trees, and sometimes that's just not enough. So it's always a good idea to just try to avoid selling them anything with wood and that includes barrels if I tried to sell them drinks right here they might get mad at me because of the uh, barrels that I'm using so I gotta be very careful uh, as to exactly what I sell them so I'm just gonna go ahead and select a couple of seed barrels uh, they're gonna get mad at me probably but that's pretty much all I have to trade so I'm gonna go ahead and resume Somebody should head down and grab one of my seed barrels and bring him up, and I will go ahead and trade with them. So let me go ahead and pause it until they get that barrel up there. Yep. Well, here they come already. So let's just go ahead and wait for a second. And I'm going to hit, while he's moving up there, I'm going to go ahead and hit Q and tell my trader to get up here. So let's go R, trader requested at depot. Now all we got to do is wait for my trader to get up there, and we should be on our way to trading. And hopefully he gets up there soon. No, that wasn't him. That wasn't him either, was it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause and make sure that my trader gets up here. Be right back. 
Okay, here we go. My trader is there, and now that he is there, you can see T for trade opens up. So I'm going to hit T. Uh, hopefully, there we go. Okay, now that I've hit T, we have the trading screen. Now, if you look over here on this side, we have our stuff. This is the seed barrel that I uh, was going to sell to him. And over here, we have the trader's stuff. Now, you can you can see the, basically the weight of the object and the price of the object. Uh, I'm not sure which one is the weight and which one is the price. It might be this is the price and which one this one is the weight. But uh, ex not exactly sure. I guess I could find out. But um, anyways, the things you want to pay attention to is right here. The allowed weight. Every trading deep or every trading caravan you get um, will have a weight limit. So you can only trade uh, up to that amount of weight with them. And then this value here is how much uh, the things you're going to sell is worth. This value over here is how much uh, the things you're going to buy from him is worth. And the trader profit. Now, you'll always want to make sure that the trader has some sort of profit. If he doesn't, he just will not accept the uh, trading or the, the trade you're trying to work on. You're enchanted by your moral, more ethical works. We've come to trade. All right. Now, let's go ahead and hit T for trade there. And if you notice, you'll see value 139. So I guess this is the price. And then trader profit 139. Now, if I go back over here and start selecting the things that I want from them, let's say, let's get a couple of cages. Um, right now, you can see trader profit says 69. The value of what um, I'm getting from him is worth 70, and the value that I'm giving him is worth 139. Now, that should be. A, an acceptable trade for him except for the barrel which might be a bad thing once a beautiful tree and now it's a rude bauble fit only for your kind you see what I'm saying he got angry with me because I tried to trade him a barrel now that's a bad thing because he's not going to accept my trade I can hit T all I want and he's not going to accept the trade and basically I can't trade anything with him because most of the stuff I have is made out of wood. Uh, I will, however, start to build uh, build uh, stone like items and basically uh, trinkets and things like that that I can trade them that they will accept. But right now we don't have anything. But this is the example of trading for you. This should get you through anything. Now. If you look down here, you can hit V for view good. If you're not sure as to what it is, if I hit V, it'll tell you right here. Tame fluffy, fluffy wambler. Uh, that's a there's a there's an animal in this cage basically, and you can look at any of these actually. Um, let's hit V on the rope. You can see rope read fiber rope. Uh, basic value 60. It'll tell you its weight, all kinds of diff different things. Um, <clears throat> you can seize his goods. You can basically take the stuff from him if you have an army or somebody to back you up. If you don't have somebody to back you up, like an army, then it's not a good idea to seize anything from these people. Especially if they were a human or a dwarven caravan. Um, other things you you need to worry about in here is, like I said, the weight and the price. And always make sure they have, have a profit. If they don't have a profit, they won't accept the trade. Or if you have too many items, they won't accept the trade. So just make sure that you know, you're trying to keep it as even as possible. And just keep on working with them until you get the trade you want. Anyways, that's about all I can fit into this episode right now. Um, in the next episode, we should have our rooms all finished, and we should uh, start creating some uh, trinkets and things like that that I can use to sell and uh, buy other things, because I would really like to buy some stuff. I just can't right now. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you in the next episode.